Welcome back to the Daily Gold University. Thank you for joining me. This is lesson number four. What really drives silver? Silver has long been considered the poor man's gold or gold's little brother because historically it was money, but much less valuable than gold. According to Wikipedia, silver was far more common than gold as the monetary standard from 3000 BC until the late 19th century. The United States mandated a silver standard with the Mint and Coinage Act of 1792 and a value of silver of roughly 15 times that of gold. However, the silver standard officially ended under the Coinage Act of 1873 in which silver was demonetized. Figure 4.1 from sharelinks.com plots the gold-silver ratio dating back 300 years and includes my annotations. The ratio has consistently hovered around 15. The ratio consistently hovered around 15, reflecting the historic supply differential and often legally mandated value between the two metals. Since the demonetization of silver under the Coinage Act of 1873, the ratio has ranged from 15 to over 100. It fell to 15 during the commodity peak in 1920, the gold bubble peak in 1980, and in 1968 due to gold's artificially low price due to the gold standard. The ratio fell to 32 when silver spiked to $50 an ounce in 2011. As we publish, the gold-silver ratio stands at 80. Side note, it's closer to 90 as we're recording this. If we are in a secular bull market that will last another 10 to 15 years for precious metals, then 15x to 20x for the ratio is a reasonable target, but only for the end of the bull market. Although silver is consumed like a commodity or base metal, its driving forces are quite similar to gold. In terms of demand, that means investment demand. While gold demand is almost entirely composed of jewelry, investment demand, and central bank demand, silver demand is mostly industrial, jewelry, photography, and silverware. However, as with gold, investment demand drives silver on the margin. In figures 4.2 and 4.3, we share screenshots of data from Metals Focus and GFMS, courtesy of the Silver Institute. Figure 4.2 shows a screenshot of the supply and demand data from 2007 through 2016. The strongest gains in the silver price correspond with the strongest inventory builds in the exchange, exchange traded products or ETPs. The only year that was different was 2008. Note the data from 2009 and 2010, two of silver's three strongest years in recent decades. In addition, the changes in ETP inventories in 2013, 2014, and 2015 should be noted. These were bad years for silver, despite huge supply deficits. In recent years, the strongest gains in the silver price correspond, excuse me, in recent years, the strongest gains in the silver price occurred in 2016, 2019, and 2020, which included the strongest investment in silver exchange-traded products, or ETPs. After 2021, the silver price declined for two more years as investment demand declined. The supply-demand imbalances, which were some of the biggest on record, did not impact the silver price positively. Although investment demand drives silver on the margin, industrial demand is heating up and could play a more important role in the years ahead. It has risen in each of the previous three years and is projected to rise to a record 711 million ounces in 2024. Historically, industrial demand made up half of all silver demand. Now it accounts for 64% of all silver demand. Many analysts project industrial demand will continue to grow over the next decade due to the ongoing energy transition. Silver is needed in solar panels and electric vehicles, which require one and a half to more than twice as much silver used in cars with internal combustion engines. Analysts project that as many as 90 million ounces of silver will be needed for automobiles in 2025. However, solar panels are a game changer. Sprott estimates that solar demand could grow 170% to 273 million ounces in 2030, representing one-fifth of all silver demand. 
The recent increase in industrial demand did not and has not impacted the price of silver because investment demand is paramount, but also because above ground stockpiles of silver are plentiful. The London Bullion Management Association vaults have roughly 900 million ounces, while COMEX vaults carry 300 million ounces. COMEX stands for the Commodity Exchange, a division of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Above ground stockpiles of silver have decreased, but there is a cure for that. Higher silver prices will draw out more above ground silver and silver production. More silver is mined as a byproduct of base metals, lead, zinc, and copper, and gold. Higher base metals prices will be required to induce greater production of silver. Although the industrial demand for silver is growing sharply, history shows that the trend in gold remains the most important driver of silver. Figure 4.4 compares silver with gold and copper. Historically and recently, silver has aligned more with gold than copper. Historically, silver has acted as a highly leveraged play on gold. It greatly outperformed gold during the two secular bull markets in yellow and underperformed gold badly during the two secular bear markets, 1980 to 2001 and 2011 to 2023. Silver has also followed gold more closely than copper on a shorter term and more cyclical basis. Consider the following examples. Copper performed reasonably well from the mid-1980s to the mid-1990s. It even retested its 1980 peak in 1989 and 1995. Gold trended down during this period, while silver, by 1993, was trading at around a 20-year low. Each market performed well in the early to mid-2000s, but gold and silver strongly outperformed copper from 2006 to 2011. The outlier in silver's history was the price increase in 1997 due to Warren Buffett's huge investment. Silver resumed its downtrend in 1998. Buffett sold it in 2006. Most recently, silver has remained strongly tied to gold. The vertical line shows the gold peak in August of 2020. Copper surged higher after that into 2021, which temporarily helped silver. However, copper did not peak until early 2022 when gold and silver were trading below their August 2020 peaks. In 2024, gold exploded above its previous peak of $2,100 an ounce, and silver followed by surpassing $29 to $30 an ounce. Copper remains below its 20, 2021 and 2022 peaks. Side note, although it has moved up in recent months. In figure 4.5, we plot gold, silver, and the Consumer Price Index, CPI, to compare silver's performance around important breakouts in the gold price and rising inflation. The vertical blue lines mark the most important breakouts in gold, and the lighter ones mark the other breakouts in gold. The biggest moves in silver occurred after the most important breakouts in gold. Breakouts in gold usually occur before and lead to breakouts in silver. Most notably, Gold broke out first in 1978, 2003, and 2019, and did so again in March of 2024, a few months before silver's breakout. Gold usually leads inflation, and gold also leads silver. The three most significant breakouts in gold and ensuing advances in silver occurred during, excuse me, occurred amid rising inflation. Here is how to think of the relationship between gold, silver, and inflation, and how silver might perform. Silver will outperform if gold breaks out to the upside and inflation rises. If gold breaks out to the upside but in a deflationary and recessionary environment, then gold will outperform silver. In 2024, gold and silver made significant breakouts, but silver underperformed for two reasons. First, the rate of inflation has not increased statistically. The larger narrative of economic weakness, recession, and Fed rate cuts supports gold more than silver until inflation expectations rise. Second, the technical setup is conducive to gold outperforming until silver moves beyond the $35 to $37 an ounce resistance level. Gold broke out from a 13-year cup and handle pattern to a new all-time high. It is in blue sky territory, facing little long-term resistance. Although silver broke past four-year resistance at $28 to $30 an ounce, it still needs to chew through that supply from $35 to $37 an ounce. When silver breaks past $37 an ounce, it will be in a position to outperform gold. Chapter Summary Silver is the most unique commodity because of its long history as money 
in modern history as an industrial metal. Industrial demand now amounts to 64% of the total demand for silver, but it continues to trade mostly as a leverage play on gold. History shows that greater industrial demand or a significant supply deficit has not impacted the silver price. The trend in the gold price remains the exclusive driver for silver. When gold is in a secular bear market, silver is a complete afterthought and trades as such. However, when gold is in a secular bull market, silver becomes a precious metal and will outperform gold significantly as the bull market matures. With gold in a new secular bull market, the outlook for silver over the years ahead is quite promising. The potential acceleration of growth in industrial demand over the years ahead adds a new wrinkle to the picture. This could cause silver to trade as more of a base metal or perhaps provide it with more support during periods of weakness in investment demand. Nevertheless, we should assume gold will remain the primary driver of the silver price. That is the end of lesson four. Thank you so much for tuning in. And next up in lesson number five is technical analysis of gold and silver.